Everyone go to the moon. Everyone go to the moon. Everyone go to the moon. To the moon. Hi guys, I am in an airport and I need to get a video out real quick. So I wanted to talk about um, translation of functions. So if you remember in one section, we talked about parent graphs, like a quadratic function, a cubic function, square root function. And we talked about how they can shift from left to right and up and down. So in this video, I wanna talk about how the translations happen for our parent functions. Okay, here is our graphing calculator and let's go to y equals and start with x squared. x squared is a common graph that most students know. It's a parabola and as you see, we have a parabola. Um, so let's take a look at a first type of translation. Let's say if I have x squared, let's see, plus 6. Now what I'm going to do is click on my arrow button until I get to the line to the left hand side and click enter on it. That will make the line bold so I know the difference between the two. And as you see this graph has been shifted up six units. When you add a number to a function what it's going to do is make your graph shift up. let's say if I subtract something. So the guess would be, hey, if I put minus four, then maybe my graph would shift down four units. And you are correct. As you see, the bold line shows the graph has shifted down four units. Now let's take it another, let's take a look at another type of translation. Let's keep the x squared there, but let's say if we have x minus 6, close the parentheses and square this whole thing. Now, let's see what type of translation we have with this. Let's press the graph button. And as you see, the bold graph is shifted 6 units to the right in the positive direction. So when you have a number inside with the x value and it's squared, it's actually making it go in the opposite direction. As you see here, if I put plus five, this should go in the left direction. See, it's going in the negative direction. So it does the opposite of what you think it would. Let's clear this out and look at x squared minus three. So you see the difference between the two, like x squared minus three, I'm putting the minus three at the end versus the third graph, I'm actually putting the minus three inside with the uh, x value. And I'm going to make all of these a different type of line. Let me make the second one bold and I'll make the third one. Let's make this one dotted. So I'll press enter until I get a dotted line so I can see the difference between these. The first one is a normal graph that starts at zero. The bold one is shifted down and then the dotted one is shifted in the positive direction. So let's take a look at the graphs again. You have minus three for the second one and minus three for the third one. You see how it goes in opposite directions. Now let's look at another type of translation. Let's go ahead and put our x squared back for our, no, actually let's look at x to the cube, x to the third. This is gonna be the little squiggly line when you have a cubic function. I wanna put this example in here to show you that I can do this translation for any type of graph. It doesn't have to be a parabola, it can be any type of parent graph that I'm shifting from left to right or up and down. See this one I put x to the third plus five and it made the whole thing shift up five units. So I wanted to make sure that we understand that this can be done with any type of function. And see even here 
when I put minus, it made the graph shift down. And it shifted down three units. Likewise, if I put a value inside with the X, let's do X minus three and then raise it to the third power. This should go in the positive direction to the right. And it does, it goes to the right three units. You see the bow one goes to the right three units. Let's change this to a plus sign. Let's say plus five. So this should go to the left five units. Okay. Okay, let's explore another characteristic that can happen with our functions. Let's start with x squared, our parabola. And in y2, let's put 5x squared. And let's make this bold, and let's see what happens to our graph. Remember, the bold one is the one that we're looking at. As you see on this graph, when you put 5 in front of x squared, it makes the graph skinnier. This is called a vertical stretch. When you put a number greater than five in front of your graph, it makes it skinnier. Notice I put nine there, and again, I have the bold graph in the middle is getting skinnier. Now, let's say if I put a number here that's less than one, like a fraction. Let's put one over nine x squared. And when I take a look at this, notice the graph gets wider. This is called a vertical compression. So it's actually pushing your graph down, making it wider. And this could be any fraction between zero and one. So I could put like two over five. And let's take a look at the graph. It's still gonna get wider. This is a vertical compression. Okay, last thing that we're gonna talk about is reflections. So of course, let's look at our parabola, x squared. And in y2, let's put negative x squared. Now our traditional parabola opens up. It faces upwards, it makes a U shape. But when I put a negative in the front, it actually makes it shift down and reflect over the x-axis. So now it opens down instead of opening up. This is called a reflection on the x-axis. Notice all you have to do is put a negative in front of your um, function, your original function, and it will make any function shift across the x-axis. Now let's combine all this stuff together. <laughs> Notice the function that I put in there. I put x plus 3 squared minus 5. So this should be a parabola that goes in the negative direction, 3 units, and then shifts down 5 units. And that's exactly what happens. It goes 3 in the negative direction, and then 5 down. And if I wanted this parabola to face down, instead of facing up, all I would need to do is put a negative in the front. So the negative that's in the front of your function tells you that it's gonna be facing down instead of facing up. See? Thank you for watching.